It's Master Chef. I want this so much. Searching for Britain's best amateur cook. Somebody says the word competition, it means winning. 136 contestants who all believe they have undiscovered talent. I'm desperate to win this. Whoever wins, it'll change their life. Cooking doesn't get tougher than this. A warm welcome to MasterChef. You have one chance to show us that you have cookery skill and a good palate. Ladies and gentlemen, 50 minutes. Let's cook. These six amateur cooks have just one shot at staying in the competition. They must create one exceptional dish from mystery ingredients, which include sea bass, aubergine, new potatoes, watercress, paprika, dark rum, bananas, basil, and shortbread. Louise works for a bank in Jersey and would love to open an informal restaurant. My father was actually a chef in the army in Australia and my grandfather was head chef at Glen Eagles. My biggest influence is really to, to get, get into the kitchen. I cook about five, six hours on a Sunday just to bake for everybody at work. Do you really? Yes, so just bring it in for the passion. That's really nice. Thank you. P.A. Pearl aspires to bring English and West African cuisines together in her food. Opening my own restaurant would be a good opportunity to inform people of the traditions of West Africa, specifically Ghana. What's your first ever food memory, Pearl? I remember Mum saying to me, you can't cook. I'm not having a daughter who can't cook. And then that's when I started learning African food and English food. 20 minutes have gone. Freelance writer and food blogger Alex lives on a small holding in Cambridge and relishes culinary challenges. I've cooked with, with trotters, with heart, uh, with pig's head, brains, all sorts of, of weird and wonderful things. What is it about food that's hooked you in like this? Creating something out of nothing and, and presenting people with it. I think feeding people is, is quite an intimate act and um, I, I enjoy it. Glaswegian Cameron has a passion for travel and food. When I was 18, I moved to Japan and just the complete culinary experience was absolutely incredible. What, what do you want to do, ideally? I'd like to um, be able to go into food writing, just experience local cultures, you know, spend six months in Thailand, go into local markets, eating in great restaurants. Nice dream, mate. I know. Yeah. You have 20 minutes left. Mother of two, Ruth, lives in rural Oxfordshire, where she would love to open a high-end restaurant. I've done property renovation. I've made the couture dresses. But there is one thing that I've really always wanted to do, and that's cooking. What sort of cook are you right now? I would say I'm a high-end dinner party cook, shall we say, that can do mass, mass production if necessary. Which do you prefer, the mass production or the high-end? Uh, you see, I do like the presentation side of things. Ladies and gentlemen, you've only got 15 minutes left. Twenty-nine-year-old John trained as a composer, but now works in the mobile games industry. I'm looking for a bit more creativity in what I do, and I see cooking as being an ideal avenue for that. You want to move away from mobile phones into food. How? Well, firstly, by winning MasterChef. <laughs> Then I'd love to have my own restaurant. Not too fancy, but a step above from Gastro Pub. You have just over five minutes left. It's 
step away from your benches. Your time is up. Mother of two, Ruth, has created a rum and banana mousse with caramelised bananas and shortbread. Your biscuits are yummy. They are sweet and buttery. I get the unmistakable flavour of lovely ripe banana. What I don't get is any rum at all. You're promising big flavours like banana and rum, and it actually is falling a little bit short, but... I like the skill you're showing the biscuits. Thank you. Freelance food writer Alex's dish is sea bass with roasted tomatoes, sautéed potatoes, aioli and a watercress salad. What you have in there is some wonderful flavours of those rich roasted tomatoes against the wonderfully cooked piece of bass with rich, well-made mayonnaise and that is delicious. Your fish, flesh is soft, the skin is crispy on the outside. I like it a great deal. Thank you very much. Jersey-based Louise has made Mediterranean sea bass and an aubergine and mozzarella stack with olives. Um, the aubergine's not cooked. It's, it's really firm. We've got problems here. We've got bones all over the fish. We've got uncooked aubergine. Sorry. There's, there's some interesting ideas here, but there's also a lot of mistakes, Louise. A lot of mistakes. Glaswegian Cameron has prepared a dish of Italian baked aubergine with eggs, mozzarella and a basil vinaigrette. Your basil vinaigrette is sharp and acidic and really overpowering against salty ham and almost flavourless cheese, all stewed together inside this sort of slimy pack or stack. It's not good. Sorry. It's got a very, very greasy feel. There's not a huge amount of flavour in there at all. Games manager John's dish is pan-fried sea bass with garlic and rosemary roasted new potatoes served with crispy pancetta and lemon butter. What I like a lot is that really sharp lemon butter sitting next to that crispy sea bass which is sweet and very well cooked but it needs something softer in there to bring the whole thing together. Mm. Tastes great. Salty ham, sharp lemon, soft fish, but it is too dry. Yeah. P.A. Pearl's dish is pan-fried sea bass with paprika on new potatoes with a cream sauce and a roasted pepper salad. I think your fish is cooked quite nicely and I like the idea of that smoky paprika with those lovely roast red peppers. But potato going into cream sauce it's becoming a bit sour and sharp. Right. Your fish is cooked really well. And that deep pepperiness of paprika over the top is really nice. After that, everything is very confused. OK. I've got to say, I think there was some real skill in the room today, but there were some extraordinary dishes out there. Cameron was just frightful. It was slimy, it was slippery. It had boiled egg, it had undercooked aubergine. It was as bad as it gets. Cameron goes home. I think Louise should go as well. She'd stuffed the cavity of the fish and baked it. Great. But what I can't understand or excuse is a great big stack of raw slices of aubergine with mozzarella in between. That aubergine stack was wrong. 
John made a good fist of things today. I think he had the best looking plate in the room. Really nicely fried fish. But it was a bit dry. I think he's a decent cook. Alex, I love him. Alex has skill and he has technique, that's for sure. And it just tasted great. Burst of sweet tomato, garlic mayonnaise and fish. Delicious. That leaves us with a straight decision between Pearl and Ruth. <laughs> I'm undecided with Pearl because she cooked her fish really well and the paprika flavour on it was very, very good. After that, it just got really confused. I thought, oh, it looks too bland on its own. It needs a bit of colour, so I added sweet peppers and I know that's a big mistake. It didn't work in my mind, but there was skill in the fact she filled the fish and she understands some aspects of seasoning. Ruth confuses me. I really like the fact that she baked and baked really, really well. Those little biscuits she had on the side, they were delicious. But she promised me rum and actually only gave me banana flavour. I like the girl. I like the clean presentation. I like the ideas. But it should have had bags of flavour. I didn't want to put too much liquid in with the mousse to set, but obviously I was played it safe and um, it didn't quite go as planned. Decision. Louise, Cameron, I'm sorry you're leaving us. Alex, John, well done, you're cooking tomorrow. Thank you. Ruth or Pearl? Ruth? Congratulations. Sorry, Pearl. It is the most amazing feeling. Um, wow, I'm blown away. Blown away to get through. This is probably the most important thing I've done. It's, it means absolutely everything to me. Right now, I'm really proud of myself for getting through to this first round, but hopefully I can show you a bit more. We have three really good cooks going through to the next round, and they are going to test their skills in a professional kitchen for the first time. It's day two, and Alex... Ruth and John are heading to their first professional kitchen at Axis, a modern British restaurant on London's Aldwych. They will be working under executive chef Tony Fleming. We can't have anything but 100%, so if anything's not right, you're going to know about it, it'll come back to you. Come on. Mother of two Ruth's dish is duck confit with plums, a pan-fried ball of con cannon and a red wine jus. Games manager John's responsible for the grilled calf's liver with mousseline potato, crispy pancetta, sautéed spinach and an onion gravy. I just hope that I can cook to the best of my ability and turn out some great food. Freelance writer Alex is in charge of the mature cheddar souffle with beetroot leaves, baby artichoke and a salsa verde dressing. If the souffle dish isn't away within 45 seconds, it's just going to sink, it's going to collapse and I'm going to have to start all over again. With the restaurant filling up, it's not long before the first orders start to come in. Two consummate chicken liver crab, three souffle and a duck confit. Yes, chef. Alex immediately comes under pressure with three souffles, a dish that must be cooked and timed to perfection. Quickly get them out, careful, careful. Lovely souffles though, very good. Thank you, chef. Go, 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 go. Whilst Alex gets off to a confident start, on the other side of the kitchen, John is trying to make his mousseline potatoes. Right, stop, stop, stop. Whoa, whoa, what is that? That is ruined. You've got that far too hot. Feel how hot that is. This is completely separated. The liver's ready now, but the potato's now going to be three minutes. Right, stop, everybody, stop, stop, stop. Right, we're going to redo it. Right, table 13, a liver medium rare and a lemon sole, right? We'll do it now in four minutes. Get another liver on. Yes, chef. With John now holding up the service, he must cook without making mistakes. Yeah, that's burnt. 
John, get it together, yeah? It's not a good start, is it? No, chef. You split the mash and you burnt the bacon, all right? Now your liver's overcooking again. I can't do this table for a third time, all right? Get that butter whisking in that mash, yeah? Yes, John? Yes, chef. Answer me, yeah? <laughs> One comfy, five minutes. Yes, chef. John is not the only one feeling the pressure, as Ruth's duck confit is proving popular. Don't you reduce that too much, that's, that's ruins. Look, it's like, uh, it's like Marmite, it's too sticky. OK, sorry, Chef. Get another one on quickly. Halfway through the busy service, Alex has more orders for his souffle. Souffles are ready, Chef. Perfect. Yeah, they're your best ones yet. Well done. Thank you very much, Chef. I can tell he's doing well because I've barely spoken to him. Do you know what I mean? I seem to be spending a lot of my time with John uh, and Ruth. Well, I've only spent to speak to Alex all day. But it's a nice souffle. Well done. Thank you, Chef. Okay, go. Yeah, table four. We had a bun. One liver, one duck confit. Yes, Chef. After John's earlier disasters, he really needs to up his game. John. Yes, Chef. What's this? Liver medium rare, Chef. Yeah, but it's three and a half, three minutes to go. Yeah. Yes, chef. Get chef. another liver on. Get another liver on. Yes, That'll chef. be. There's nothing. I haven't even got the plates out. John, get it together. Seriously, you're going to send the whole kitchen down, yeah? Yes, chef. Thank you, thank you, chef. Thank you, chef. Well done, John. That's a lovely liver. Very good. Thank you, chef. It's nearing the end of service, and Ruth has a barrage of late orders for her duck. One going now, and then six after, yeah? Those six need to be oven soon. Yes, chef. It's going with three souffle, yeah? So you know what that means? Yes, Chef. It, it won't wait. Yes, you need chef. to be ready, yeah? Ruth, what's that? What's that, Ruth? Whoa, 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 I burnt whoa, whoa. it, Chef. Is this for this table? Yes, it is, Chef. Sorry. Have you got any more in? Uh, no, Chef. How many did you use, no. Chef? Two? Oh, no. Keep up now, yeah? You're yes, getting a chef. lot of duck on, yeah? Ruth eventually manages to get her dishes to the pass. Beautiful, Ruth. Beautiful. Thank well you, done. Chef. Very good, very good. If there's any consolation, we sell more duck confit than any other dish, yeah? Thank you, Chef. OK, that's the, that's the end of service. Well done, guys. Thanks very much. Good job. Thank you, Chef. Thank you, Chef. So, John, as he started in the beginning of service, nerves just got the better of him. Completely fell to pieces, timings were all over the place, and by the end, he got it together. I've always said I wanted to have my own restaurant. Now I think I may need to reassess where I'm going to be in that restaurant. After that service, I'm leaning towards front of house. We started to get swamped with orders, and it did get on top of her, and she did, she struggled. The whole experience from the moment I walked in has been amazing and exhausting. Very busy beginning of service for Alex. He coached very well, then he held it together all the way through service. I could do this day in, day out. I want to come back tomorrow if I can. The contestants have now been on their feet for the last six hours, but there's no let up. Back at MasterChef HQ, they'll be expected to produce their very best two course meal. There is a quarter-final place up for grabs, and I am expecting good food from you three. Your own two dishes. One hour, ladies and gentlemen, let's cook. Games manager John impressed yesterday with his pan-fried sea bass and lemon butter, but struggled in the pro kitchen. I'm going to start with a pan-fried red mullet, which is on a chorizo and bean stew. Second dish is going to be crispy pork belly, and that's served with savoy cabbage, bacon lardons, walnuts, and a apple puree on the side. Hearty grub. Is that you? That's very much me. You know, my food is all about simple ingredients cooked well. The idea of cooking pork belly, which needs to be slow roasted in an hour. Can he make it moist and delicious? Twenty-five minutes gone. Food writer Alex sailed through the invention test with his sea bass and roasted tomatoes, and excelled cooking soufflés in the pro kitchen. What are you going to cook for us? I'm doing uh, a duck breast served with a spiced tobacco caramel, pickled cucumber and a potato rosti. 
And for dessert, it is a gooseberry fool with a cassis reduction and cat's tongue biscuits. Are they your own creation or are they coming from cookbooks? These are completely my own creation. Um, I know that duck and smoky flavours work really well together, so hopefully it should all come together in one great plate of food. He is seriously exciting, but the blending of those flavours is a tough one. He doesn't just want to cook his way to a quarter final, he wants to win MasterChef with those dishes. You've got just over 20 minutes. Yesterday, mother of two Ruth impressed by baking her own biscuits, but her rum and banana mousse lacked punch. What are you cooking for us? I'm going to cook you um, a poached chicken breast, which has a venison, fig and wild mushroom filling on a bed of spinach. And then I'm going to do you a rum and rhubarb and ginger crumble with ginger cream. Are we actually going to be able to taste the rum today, Ruth? You're going to be able to taste the rum. What would it be like to get the quarterfinal place? It'd be exhilarating. It would be a massive challenge from then on, but I'm prepared to push all the way. Good luck. Thank you Thank very you, much, Ruth. Thank you. Rum. Yesterday it was Ruth's nemesis. Today will it be a downfall? You have just three minutes. That's it. Time's up. Food writer Alex has created a dish of duck breast and crackling, spiced tobacco caramel, pickled cucumber, potato rosti, and a watercress and duck heart salad. Followed by a gooseberry fool with cassis and elderberry reduction and cat's tongue biscuits. The look of the dish is one of a French classic. The flavor is something of the Orient. It's fantastic. There is a sweetness from that tobacco sauce against a sharpness of cucumber with little subtle notes of smoky, of sweet, of sour, of sharp. Ah, that is so cool. Thank you. So cool. <sighs> Thank you. I think it tastes great. It is an amalgamation of very unusual flavors which fascinatingly work perfectly. Thank you. From your duck to your gooseberry fool. Really nicely made biscuits, but that fool cassis is in there, that's for sure. But there's no sharpness of gooseberry to contrast. The texture's not thick enough, it's too thin and runny. But you have baked very nice biscuits. I, I, I don't know who's more disappointed with this, you or me, because I, I was very much looking forward I to it. I guarantee it's me. Mother of two Ruth's first dish is rolled poached chicken breast with a venison, fig and wild mushroom stuffing on spinach with sauté potatoes and shallots. Followed by roasted rhubarb, ginger and rum crumble with a ginger cream. To be able to marry very strong venison, woody wild mushrooms and soft, perfectly cooked chicken together with a creamy mushroom sauce, I think is a great skill and you have pulled it off without any doubt. And then I start to feel robbed because the spinach doesn't have any seasoning, the potatoes don't have any seasoning and nor do the shallots. I love the flavour of your sauce and that stuffing. It is meaty, it is rich. I wish you could have got the same flavour in your vegetables. Okay. Let's have a good look at your crumble. What a lovely pudding. The sharp ginger and rhubarb with the oaty top and the cream is lovely flavours and lovely textures. But you promised me rum and I can't taste any rum. Delicious dessert. Thank you. But I want my rum. Okay. 
Games manager John has cooked pan-fried red mullet with a chorizo and bean stew and parsley oil, followed by a crispy pork belly with savoy cabbage, walnut, bacon lardons and an apple puree. Your piece of red mullet is cooked absolutely perfectly and you know, I like the sharpness of that sour parsley sauce with the paprika rich chorizo underneath and the soft beans. But the tomato sauce is tasting over reduced and it's becoming a bit tinny rather than being lovely and fresh. I like the chilli heat you got in there, I like the spice and I like the sweetness of the tomato up to a point. It's a little too rich. Move on from your mullet to your pork. That is delicious. Your pork is cooked perfectly. It's soft, lovely, sour, but yet sweet apple sauce. Smokiness coming from the pancetta and those walnuts. I absolutely love it. Thank you. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> what you've managed to do in an hour is stunning. I've got nothing but praise for you. Well done. It tastes very nice indeed. Thank you very much. Great day today. I really like these people. I wish we could take all three with us. But none of these three, as good as they are, cooked without fault. Alex did us a very interesting duck dish. I think it was really skilled. I think it was extraordinary presentation and it delivered something I did not expect and I love that sort of surprise. I don't know, though, what happened with his pudding today. A fool, John, isn't the most difficult dessert to make. It didn't have the flavour of gooseberry and it didn't quite work. I just hope that the, the, the mistakes don't send, see me sent home today. Ruth's food just looks lovely, it looks a picture. And the stuffing inside the chicken breast, the venison and the prunes, that was lovely. And she messed it up by not seasoning the spinach and the potatoes. Ruth promised us a rhubarb crumble with rum, no rum. Which is a real shame, because that rhubarb crumble was absolutely delicious. All it needs is a little tweak here, a little tweak there, and Ruth's food becomes fantastic. I really kicked myself for once again not putting enough rum in. I think John's a bit of a talent because he doesn't stray very far from classic ingredient combinations. The red mullet was cooked brilliantly on top of a stew of tomatoes and chorizo. Well, perfect. Lovely combinations. He'd been a bit heavy-handed with the tomato puree. He took some risks. The idea of a belly pork cooked in an hour, I thought that it was going to be tough, it was going to be chewy, but actually, I thought that pork was absolutely delicious. I felt after the pro kitchen this morning, I really needed to show myself and the judges that I can do this. I don't know what we're going to do, because all of them have given us stuff that we've really loved today, and all of them have made silly mistakes. I think we've got three fantastic cooks. I think we've got one really special cook. Really special. Quarter finalist, Alex. I'm completely ecstatic. Love it. Best feeling. Best feeling in the world. <laughs> I'm still as passionate as ever. I still want my own restaurant, and nothing will get in the way of that. This competition has been more than I ever dreamt of, and I have loved every second of it, good or bad. I believe in myself, I am confident in my abilities, I can keep improving, and I can win this. Alex is an exciting quarter finalist, but we have plenty more cooks to see, and we will discover more exciting people. Bring them on. Welcome to MasterChef. We need to be impressed by you today. Ladies and gentlemen, 50 minutes. Let's cook. These six now have just one chance to shine if they want to stay in the competition. 
they must create one outstanding dish from any of today's mystery ingredients, which include cherry tomatoes, long grain rice, salmon, asparagus, capers, curry powder, and smoked haddock. Mortgage advisor Amanda has put having a family on hold to pursue her cooking dreams. My biggest strength is my want and determination and I'm like a sponge when it comes to learning things. Amanda, what's the dream and, and why a MasterChef? I'm in my mid-30s now. Time for, time for a new challenge. Eventually, I would like the incredibly hard work of having my own restaurant in Brighton. Twenty-year-old Emma studies food science at Cardiff University. I was an au pair in Paris and in Madrid, and I definitely would think that's influenced my style of cooking. Why have you decided to come on MasterChef? I think going on MasterChef gives that step forward to cooking, like practicing my hobby and pushing my hobby forward. Is there something more than just a hobby? Ladies and gentlemen, 25 minutes gone. Seed salesman Tim dreams of opening the first Michelin star restaurant in Suffolk. I find that coming up with something myself and coming up with something a bit more original, um, which will probably surprise the people that are eating it, um, is, is a great thing to do. What are you making for us? I'm going to do you a smoked haddock risotto. It is long grain rice, which isn't ideal, but... Um... Making a risotto from long grain rice, Tim. Is that not dangerous? It's, it's dangerous, but at the end of the day, it's something that I hope that nobody else here would do. Barman Dan gave up studying architecture to pursue a career in food. My dream in life is hopefully to be able to make my own wine. And I'd love to combine that with my um, passion for food and have an amazing restaurant. Why do you cook? Because I love cooking. I work six days, I work by the bar. My one day off, I can happily just spend the whole day just relaxing in the kitchen cooking. Guys, you have 15 minutes left. 34-year-old Suzanne likes putting her own twist on rustic British food. What do you do now, Suzanne? I'm a police officer. Why would you want to go from one pressured environment to another one? I don't find it stressful. I don't find the pressure in cooking. It's something that just exhilarates me, something that makes me happy. My dream is to do anything where I'm cooking all the time, like a little tiny bistro in the middle of the country. 18-year-old Harry likes cooking for his parents at home in Buckinghamshire. In a few ways, I think my age, you know, is good for me. I guess I've got a bit more energy. If I get an opportunity of, like, working in a kitchen, you know, I don't mind starting at the bottom. What's your food dream, mate? Own a nice Italian restaurant with massive oak, thick tables, you know, a nice simple menu, three, four dishes a night. Hey, I yeah. like your dream. Your dream's achievable, man. Uh, <laughs> That's good. You've got about four minutes to get your food on the plate. Time's up. Step away. Food science student Emma has made salmon on garlic buttered asparagus with a Mediterranean salsa. I quite like your tomato salsa with the asparagus. The disturbing part for me is that salmon sitting in the middle. Because it's flaky, it's chalky, it's salty, it's sweet, and it's not the thing that is blending the two together. I like the sauce you've made. 
I like it a lot. I just don't think that matches salmon and asparagus. Police officer Suzanne has made oven-baked smoked haddock and Bombay potatoes with tomatoes and spinach. As soon as you put that smoked haddock in the oven in foil, it's going to dry out. Smoked haddock needs to be poached in something so it keeps the moisture. I like the flavour in your potatoes with the spinach, loads and loads of onions and those sweet tomatoes bursting with juice. Not a bad effort, Suzanne. That curry powder you put is giving it a little bit of heat, but you can be bolder than that. Eighteen-year-old Harry is hoping to impress with his sweet and sour salmon and lemon asparagus. What you've got is it's got this white coming out the salmon. That means the salmon's overcooked. The asparagus is crispy because it's not cooked enough. And the sharp lemon against salty soy sauce, it's a bit difficult for the palate to work out. That asparagus isn't cooked and your soy and lemon aren't blending. Barman Dan has gone all out making a smoked haddock and parmesan souffle with buttered asparagus, tarragon and spinach. Everything is cooked very well, everything is seasoned very, very well. There's a nice flavour of that smoky, smoked haddock inside your souffle and the saltiness of the parmesan cheese. I like your souffle. It has body, it's not too heavy, it has flavour. Well done. Mortgage advisor Amanda has created pan-fried salmon, seared asparagus and roasted tomatoes with a caper, tarragon and butter sauce. I like the look of it. Tarragon, salmon, asparagus, fantastic. Those capers just far too strong to cope with all those other little flavours. Okay. Your salmon is nicely cooked, your tomatoes, well done. And then I get that just a mouthful of capers. Yeah. Seed salesman Tim has made a smoked haddock and asparagus risotto using long grain rice. It's dry and it's chalky, it's not smooth and creamy. The idea of risotto from long grain rice, never. Never gonna work, not in a million years. For me today, undoubtedly, Dan had the best dish in the room. Completely different to everybody else, and he made a souffle, which is not easy to do, and he did very well. He made a good base for it, flavoured it. Yeah, decent cooking. Dan goes through. I really like the look of Amanda's dish. Everything on the plate cooked very well, everything seasoned very well. Her only issue was that she put too many capers in that sauce. Actually, take the sauce away, there was nothing wrong with that. Amanda stays with us. Tim started off really well, but it ended so badly. Long grain rice to try and make a risotto. No, 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 no. Tim's out. That means we have a discussion between Emma, Harry and Suzanne. Well, I liked it that Suzanne tried to make us like a curry. I like the potatoes. I like the flavour of the curry against the fish. But she baked her fish dry. I hope my flavours were there in the potatoes and the tomatoes and the spinach, and I hope that will get me through. I like Harry's style. I like his boldness. I like the way his food looks. Unfortunately, the flavours didn't work. Interesting with Harry, has a really good eye for presentation, I think, and had a good concept. But what we ended up with was this sort of mixture of salty soy sauce and acidic lemon. I've only been cooking Asian flavours for about a month, so it, you know, it probably wasn't the best idea to think about it now. 
Emma presented a good enough looking plate and I really liked the salsa she made, but it didn't match the salmon, it was too strong for the salmon. It was just too much for me, it didn't work as a dish. I'm gutted it didn't go as planned, but I'm just hoping they see some potential in me and that I can, you know, only get better. We have to consider who may have something special, who demonstrated something different today. You are staying with us. Okay. Thank you. Tim, I'm afraid you're leaving us. Sorry. Emma, Suzanne, Harry, it can only be one of you. Suzanne, congratulations, Suzanne. <laughs> Well done, you three. My eyes on that quarterfinal place, and that's it now. I'm going for it. I'm massively nervous, but massively excited about going to the professional kitchen. I'd love to get through to the quarterfinals. It would just be the best achievement that I've ever made in my life. Three amateur cooks, a professional kitchen. If they listen, they will learn. If they learn, they will get better. How good can they be? Just move on. It's day two, and Amanda, Dan, and Suzanne arrive at Osteria dell'Angelo, an Italian restaurant situated in London's Westminster. They'll be working under head chef Michele Brogi. We expect 70 hours today. We will do the best food that we can for the customer. So if there's anything is not right, it won't be sent out and uh, we redo it again. In service, mortgage advisor Amanda will be responsible for a potato ravioli with vegetable sauce, carrot confit and toasted almonds. Barman Dan will be making tuna cook two ways with a lettuce, carrot and chive salad. Police officer Suzanne is in charge of the deep-fried lamb with horseradish, aubergine puree and a red wine and sugar bruschetta. It's 12 o'clock and the restaurant begins to fill. OK, first order in, two ravioli to follow one lamb, one tuna. Yes, chef. Amanda is first up with her potato ravioli. The pasta needs to be cooked al dente, then plated quickly before it gets cold. OK, if you cannot do it on the other side, just do it like that. Like a nice okay. smile. OK, okay. use the flat bottom of the spoon. Yeah. OK, sure. OK. While Amanda gets to grips with the presentation, Suzanne and Dan get an order for the same table. OK, one lamb, one tuna main course together, if you can do that. Yes, yeah, chef. Yes, yeah, chef. Communicate to each other, okay? But Suzanne's too eager to get started. She begins cooking her lamb without checking on Dan's progress. Take the aubergine away. He hasn't got even started to do the tuna yet. And you got already the lamb cooked there. Put away the aubergine, restart to do everything from scratch. I thought I was supposed to put it out now, but I wasn't, so don't want that to happen again. Dan's tuna cooked two ways requires a delicate touch. He needs to get the portions of the seared tuna and the tuna tartare exactly equal or his plate will be rejected. The tuna is too much and it's not pressed enough. Start again. Made a few mistakes. Quite stressful, never been in this situation before. It's halfway through service. And with the restaurant full, the pressure is mounting. Let's go. One of your leave, please. Yes, chef. I've got five plates to go out all at the same time at the moment. After her presentation problems, can Amanda plate up her ravioli perfectly? Yes, OK, the ravioli. Mm, looks nice. 
Very good. Thank you, chef. Very good. I like that. Across the kitchen, Suzanne is determined to make up for her earlier mistakes. One tuna now. One lamb to go, chef. Very good. Thank you, chef. Two more. Yes, chef. Do it again. I think it's going OK so far. I'm enjoying it. Meanwhile, Dan's still struggling to get the portions of his tuna dish right. Now, Dan, take this down. Use both ends if you have to. Yeah. And go like that and follow. Let's go, Dan. Keep on getting my, my salad sent back. I uh, haven't been cleaning plates correctly. Too much oil, a bit too much salt, so it goes a little bit limp. With service nearing an end, both Amanda and Susanna are hitting their stride. Two lamps to go, chef. Mm, even better than before. I'm impressed. You are very constant. Keep doing like this. Thank you, chef. Table 11, pay the compliment for the ravioli and table 6 for the lamb. They're really? Exquisite. Exquisite. Mm. Very good. So we got some customer reporting the, the ravioli was very good and the lamb exquisite. Thank you, chef. Thank you, chef. OK, Dan, this is the last yes, tuna on order, so make sure it's perfect. Yes, chef. Dan, you know what? This is perfect. Nice and neat. The salad is nice and seasoned. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you, chef. Thank you. OK, end of service. Thank you very much. Well done. Thank you, chef. Amanda, you needed to understand the, the cooking, how to put the sauce on the plate. But on the end as well, she, she did it right. When I got those compliments for the ravioli, it made me feel amazing. All the sweat, worth every minute. Dan was a bit nervous, a bit messy on the plates. Took quite a while before he was getting things right. I think this afternoon I massively need to prove myself because I let myself down quite a lot today. Susanna for me was the best. She was uh, very constant and uh, the presentation that she was doing was uh, at perfection. This is definitely what I want to do now. I just really thoroughly enjoyed it and it was just brilliant. The contestants may have had an early start, but there's no time to rest. Back at MasterChef HQ, they'll now have to cook a perfect two-course meal. Ladies and gentlemen, two dishes, one hour, a quarter-final place up for grabs. Let's cook. Yesterday, police officer Suzanne overcooked her haddock. Today, she can't afford to make the same mistake with her baked cod, lime rice and masala sauce, followed by a strawberry cheesecake made with yoghurt. What will you do if you win MasterChef, Suzanne? After my experience today in the kitchen, I'd love to work in a professional kitchen. Really? My dream is eventually to open my own little bistro. Will these two dishes win you a quarter-final place? I hope so. If Suzanne can cook my fish better than she did yesterday, I think she's got some good flavours there. Ladies and gentlemen, you've had 20 minutes, you've got 40 minutes left. Barman Dan impressed with his haddock and cheese souffle. Can he continue to deliver with his own two-course menu? For my first course, I'm doing a variational moule marinière, but I'm doing it with clams instead. Very fillet of beef with a beef stock and wine jus, lapsang souchong mash and some minted summer veg. Mint, tea and beef being the big flavours. It is quite a few different flavours, but they do link together very well. Mint, merlot and smoked potato. Wow, that's big. Does he have the palate? Can he really do it? You have just 15 minutes left. 15 minutes. In the first round, mortgage advisor Amanda added too many capers to her dish. Today, she'll need to get her combinations right if she's to become a quarter-finalist. Today, your food, how's that going to taste? I'm cooking you one of my personal favourite dishes. To start with, pan-fried scallops on black pudding and a butternut squash puree. Mm. 
followed by a bolotti and chorizo bean stew, topped off with monkfish wrapped in pancetta. And how much do you want a quarter-final, please? More than anything. I want that quarter-final to be mine. Absolutely, I do not want to walk away from here sad today. Mmm, interesting. Very sweet flavours. That's my issue. Is it going to be too sweet? Just five minutes. That's all you've got left. Five minutes. Just two minutes left. Two minutes. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. Step away from your benches. Time is up. Police officer Suzanne has made baked cod and masala sauce on spinach and lime rice followed by a strawberry and basil cheesecake made with yoghurt. Your fish is soft and perfectly cooked. It's a good-looking dish, but for me, it hasn't delivered the power that I expected from what you call a fish curry. There's a little bit of lime coming through from that rice. There's also a little bit of citrus, but there's not enough big flavour in that sauce. That was your curry. Let's try your cheesecake. Nice buttery biscuit. Really nice, soft, light cheesecake. But just a hint of strawberry, and you want big, big strawberry flavour. I don't think it's a cheesecake. I think it's a strawberry and yoghurt mousse sitting with a biscuit base. For me, it needs another dimension. Mortgage advisor Amanda is hoping to impress with pan-fried scallops on black pudding with a butternut squash puree, followed by monkfish wrapped in pancetta on a chorizo and butter bean stew with rocket. I think the puree is cooked beautifully. Uh, the black pudding, well seared. The scallop, I think, has just been braised and it should have been pan fried and crispy. Okay. The rest of it, I think, is really lovely. Thank you. The squash and black pudding are lovely, okay. but there is no scallop flavour at all. From your scallop to your monkfish. The pancetta around the outside is really there for aesthetics only. It doesn't deliver any flavour. But what does deliver flavour is that wonderful little bolotti stew under there, sweet with tomatoes, really well seasoned. I don't think that ham is necessary at all. OK. It's wet, slippery, sweet, peppery. I do like those flavours, Amanda, I really do. Barman Dan's first course is clams mariniere, followed by a rare fillet of beef with minted beans and carrots, lapsang souchong tea mash, and a red wine sauce. I like the warmth of the vermouth on the back of my throat and the sticky sweet onions against the saltiness of the clams. The clams, unfortunately, are overcooked. I think it's innovative, I think it's interesting, I think it's got great promise, and I actually quite like it. Thank you. I love the sweet onions with the vermouth, but when the vermouth, towards the end, it's starting to get bitter. But they are so overcooked. Let's try the beef. Really interesting food. Lovely mash, lovely beef, love that smokiness in that mashed potato. But that's the predominant flavour and nothing else is getting through. Everything on your plate is cooked really well. But for me, the strength of that tea and that smokiness in that mash 
to me is making the whole thing taste like a smoked pork sausage and you don't taste the beef. There were highlights in everybody's food, yet nobody cooked without an issue. I'm really pleased that Suzanne learned a lesson from yesterday because she cooked that piece of fish today perfectly. But for me, masala sauce should be spicy, it should be sweet, it should be fragrant, it should be bursting with flavour, and it wasn't. There was a slight lime flavour through the rice, and that was about it. And again, we had a pretty little strawberry cheesecake, and you could pick out the flavour of the buttery biscuits as the base, a little bit of sourness in the yoghurt, but no strawberry. I think I impressed them with the overall look of the dishes, but I don't think I've impressed them on the flavours. OK, so Suzanne goes home. Amanda, I love that sweet, sticky butternut squash puree against the richness of that black pudding, but the scallop I could not get at all. All I got was the cracked black pepper. What impresses me is the rate that Amanda's learning. I thought the flavours in that balotti bean stew were superb. Today, she tasted seasoned, tasted seasoned. That is the essence of good cookery. She is beginning to really get it. I'll be absolutely gutted from my core if I have to go home today. I think Dan's a very interesting cook, but he made a lot of mistakes today. He forgot about those clams. They overcooked, they went a bit tough. But I like that warmth of the vermouth on the back of my throat. His fillet of beef was cooked really nicely. That smoked tea mash. I thought that flavour was really interesting. But that became the most dominant flavour. What I hope will put me through today is my experimentation with different flavours. The issue for me right now is do we take the safe bet of Amanda or do we take the risk and the gamble of Dan? Quarter finalist. Is Amanda. Congratulations. Congratulations. It's amazing. I'm so happy. I'm really proud with what I've achieved today. But it didn't work out in my favour, but that's just life. I'm much really disappointed. Frankly, I think I'm, I'm slightly relieved because I don't know if it's the right thing for me to choose as a future career. <laughs> Getting through to the quarterfinal, I'm now more determined than ever. I really, really, really want this now, for sure. Amanda will join Alex to battle it out in the quarter-final.